Looking up in the sky on a bright summer day, one can observe the sun, the star that provides this planet with heat and light. But have you ever wondered where it came from? Now that we're all pumped up, let me set a few ground rules before I start. I will be using the units called Kelvin for temperature. For reference, 273.15 Kelvin is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 0 degrees Celsius. There are enormous gas clouds in space called nebulae. A nebula spans a few light years. In order to put that in perspective, one light year is almost 6 trillion miles. These gas clouds contain 70% hydrogen, 28% helium, and 2% other elements. In these clouds, the gas molecules are so far apart that they do not come into contact with each other. This is changed when there are irregularities in the nebula or by the blast of a supernova nearby that cause the molecules to get close enough for them to attract. When this happens, the cloud starts to collapse onto itself. Force of gravity is what causes this collapse and is governed by the formula F sub G equals capital G times M1 times temp M2 divided by R squared where F sub G is the force of gravity, capital G is gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters per the kilogram squared. M1 is the mass of molecule 1 and M2 is the mass of molecule 2. R is the distance between the midpoint of M1 and M2. As the nebula collapses onto itself, the rate of rotation increases. This happens because angular momentum has to be conserved. Angular momentum equals mass times velocity times radius. So, as radius decreases and mass staying constant, velocity would have to be increased in order to conserve angular momentum. As this progresses, the molecules interact more, which causes the temperature to increase. Temperature increase happens when kinetic energy of the molecule is transferred to thermal energy upon contact with each other. Density and pressure also increases. Now, as pressure increases, it begins to counter the forces of gravity. Once this happens, we get what is known as a protostar. The word proto just means precursor. A protostar is a star that has not yet initiated nuclear fusion of hydrogen into helium. Once the critical temperature of 10 million degrees Kelvin is reached, fusion of hydrogen into helium has begun and the protostar is now a star. The force generated by fusion opposes the force generated by gravity. In order for a star to be stable, these forces has to be in equilibrium. This state is called hydrostatic equilibrium. Now, some other facts about stars. Stars don't just sit around and fuse hydrogen into helium all day. They are also able to fuse all the other elements of the periodic table, up to iron. So, where do the other 60 plus elements after iron come from? This happens in a process called neutron capture. Free neutrons are able to fuse with some of the heaviest nuclei. When neutrons are added to a nuclei, it makes it unstable and when this happens, there is a great possibility that it will decay into a heavier element. Other points about free neutrons. They are only found in nuclear reactors on Earth and in stars, which are humongous nuclear fusion reactors. Oh, that's a cool picture of a supernova. When this happens, the elements that are created in the star is dispersed throughout space. It takes a hundred million Kelvin for three helium nuclei to fuse into one carbon. 0.08 times the mass of the sun is the minimum mass of a newborn star could be. 150 times the mass of the sun is the maximum mass a star could have. Well, there you have it. Now we know where the sun came from and how stars are formed. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more videos. Follow my blog at cranies.blogspot.com and on Twitter, Tumblr, and Google+. Have a good night, guys.